Art director was Tom Drennan, and the cover art was by Peter Lloyd. Some sort of object going over something that was to the point of no return. Started working on the songs, and oh man, it was just, Carrie and Steve were now on all cylinders. He had a thousand ideas, you might have heard his name. He lived along with his vision, not looking for fortune to fame. The album was coming on great. Uh, then, you know, Carrie walks in one day with another song. And I, I had come up with this finger exercise to learn how to finger pick. And I used to say, I had this little studio in our, what was the dining room of our house. And my wife, Vicki, used to walk back and forth and she said, you know, you should do something with that thing. I said, no, honey, this is just an exercise. Don't bother me. She said, I'm telling you, you should do something with that. I remember Kerry talking to me on the phone. He called me and he said, I have a very different song that I want to play you guys. I, sure, well, what? He goes, it, it's an acoustic song. I said, okay. He said, no, I'm serious. N just good, just acoustic guitar. There's not going to be any drums, nothing. So I, I played it for him. And when, when the tape finished playing, there was this kind of a stunned silence. And I think Dave said, Carrie, where has this been? I said, what? You mean you like it? We all knew Dust in the Wind was going to be a hit. We didn't think it was a hit. We just knew it was going to be a hit. I close my Automatic. This was a band that never agreed on anything. Not on that song. I don't remember if there was any physical contact, like hugging or slapping or high-fiving, but it was a unanimous carry. That is just stellar. A finger exercise turns into dust in the wind? What? You know... <laughs> What? I mean, how, how, you know, yeah, I'm just going to practice my finger picking, and, you know, and his wife walks by and makes a comment. And the next thing we know, we have the biggest song we've ever had in, in the history of the band. And not only that, it's one of the biggest songs ever. Don't hang out. There's a lot of songs that were sort of pondering reality. Very few of them from the 70s are still being played and still being loved. And that's because I think there was a sincerity in Carrie that carries through in the music. The song is so magnificent. The simplicity, the beauty of the song. The dust in the wind is, is just beautiful. Kushner heard that song. He finally saw what he had been waiting for all these years. Not that he didn't, didn't like Wayward Son, but he, he thought this is gonna really be something. When Dust in the Wind came along, and you heard the first line of the song, and then you got to the hook line. That was about as close to mailing a hit as you could ever have. It went across all formats. It was even being played on country radio, rock, hit radio, AOR. Dust was literally played everywhere. I heard that that whole opening lick was just finger exercise is what it was, which um, Joe Walsh, Life in the Fast Lane, if you ask him, boodle dick it down, dick it down, it's just a finger exercise. And so I love that those guys of that mindset, that they can just take that stuff and turn it into something that, that not only changed individuals, it changed the world. What Dust did for album sales, I don't think is as important as what it did for the band. It put them in a category of some of the most memorable artists in history. Carrie, who seems like someone for whom music had a deeply spiritual meaning. All we are is dust in the wind. It was as good a line of a song as the answer my friend is blowing in the wind. And that's the way I promoted it. 
I remember I first heard it, I, I remember thinking, that's good. But then I heard it, like any song, I heard it everywhere. I'm like, I'm oh, sick of that song. Kind of sick of Kansas right now. Which, if you were Kansas, that is a great thing. The two second test was put the needle on the record, 1001, 1002, who was that? And you could test you on 100 group, Ted, Doors, Shoplin, Hendrix. I mean, everything was identifiable. I mean, within two seconds. To this day, literally, when you hear the first couple notes of it, people, old, young, it doesn't matter, they, they know that song. record was an immediate hit, sold four million out of the box. Dust in the Wind became the second signature song for the group Kansas. Now we're into the big places. Now we're selling out 15, 20,000 seaters, two nights at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, you know, and playing Madison Square Garden is sold out, playing the Forum sold out. There's nothing like playing for 70,000 people. It takes your breath away. Played the Canada Jam biggest crowd we've ever played for in, in Canada, Toronto. I think it was, there was right around 120,000 people there. This was not something we ever envisioned. We envisioned maybe the level we got to with mask, and then we would die out. <laughs> 